Hey guys, this is Jake, and I'm going to be giving you some tips for Game Maker Studio. These are useful tips, especially if you're a beginner, and these would have helped me a lot if I had known them when I was first starting out with Game Maker Studio. So, let's get into it. Be aware of your room speed. Room speed can be found in the settings of any room object or window, and it basically determines what frames per second your game runs at. Generally, you want to keep this at 60. 60 is basically the accepted standard for games. Always put your time units in terms of room speed. So basically, if you're going to set an alarm or something and you want it to be, you know, a second, if your room speed is 60, it's going to have to be, uh, the alarm is going to have to be set to 60. But instead of hard coding that, you always want to do it in terms of room speed. So here I have uh, integer values for the number of seconds that I want the alarm to run and then I multiply those by the room speed to get the actual amount of time in game. Always name your resources with the type of resource that it is. Every sprite that I have is uh, started with SPR underscore. Every object that I have is OBJ underscore. If I had backgrounds, I would put it as BG underscore. If I had fonts, I generally do font underscore or FT underscore, something like that. This really helps prevent confusion in your resources so that when you have, for example, a player object and a player sprite, you can easily differentiate between the two and you don't run into errors with your code. Use groups to keep your resources organized. In this project, I have init and controllers group, enemies group, HUD, player, effects, and I organize all of my objects based on that. The same goes for sprites. This makes it really easy to find what you're looking for, as well as being able to easily put things into the room editor because you get this nice drop down with all the folders. Don't use precise collision checking. Never ever use precise collision checking unless you absolutely need to. Precise collision checking requires a lot more calculations to do as opposed to a simple ellipse, rectangle, or diamond. If you absolutely have to, it's fine. One object with precise collision checking is not going to affect your game. But if you have a lot of objects being created and they all have precise collision checking and they're all doing collision checks with each other, that's going to cause a massive slowdown. Be specific with your variable and resource names. Don't get too wordy with them because they become a pain to type out, but you also want to know exactly what you're looking for and how to find it. So this is the player sword attack animation, and it's simply called sprite player attack sword. That's that. Variables are descriptive enough that you understand what they are, but not too lengthy to be kind of a burden. So for example, teleport any speed. This is the animation speed for the teleport. Dead sprite speed is how fast the death animation plays. Things like that. When creating objects, assign every numerical value that you plan to reuse in the code to a variable. This prevents you from having to go in to each event separately and change every instance of that number. If you're using a specific number for a certain purpose more than once in your code, just go ahead and create event or wherever you need it to be and assign it to a variable. These are all of the variables that I have on this creation of the object skeleton. And then I have more variables for its parent, which is the object enemy. So these are all the variables that I'm creating that I don't have, to, if I need to change them, I can just go in and change one number and it works for the rest of the code. So that's going to save you a lot of time if you just do that. Use relative positioning for on-screen elements. Don't ever hard code the coordinates of the UI or anything like that. You always want to do it in terms of the view width and the view height, or alternatively, the room height and the room width. So here I have a button that switches the player to the bow. But here in the create event I have its Y set to zero which is fine because that's the top of the room. The camera is never going to move away from there ever. It stays there so that's fine. But the X, I know what the width of my screen is. But I'm not going to hard code it because if I ever need to change what the width of the screen is I would have to go in and change every instance uh, where I hard coded the position of this centered element. Make your code as modular as possible. If there's a distinct purpose that needs to be filled, 
make a new object for it. Don't try to stick things into a massive object. Here I have a controller object which just basically draws whatever it needs to and it'll set whatever global variables it needs to and maybe do a couple of step events. Um, I have a more specific spawner that spawns enemies in the level. The controller will control when the spawner is created and the spawner will control when enemies are created. If you you don't want to have to stick a bunch of stuff into one object because it gets very bloated very fast and it can be really hard to work with. If you're a little bit more specific in the different roles that your objects have to fill then it's going to be easier for you as a developer to go in and change things or know exactly where a problem is occurring. If you're making a game that has a lot of similar objects you're going to want to use parents. Parents are basically I would describe them as helper objects that can describe more specific objects. I'll explain a little bit better right now. So here I have a skeletal swordsman who has the parent of object enemy. An object enemy is just a general object that's never specifically created in the room, but it does, cr it does uh, contain events that apply to every type of enemy. So I have two types of enemies currently in the game right now. We have the the Lich and the Skeletal Swordsman. But both objects adhere to the rules defined into this object enemy. So they are all created with these variables in the create event. They all have a countdown timer. They all have a series of step uh, functions that they perform. They also have end step and begin step and draw. Don't be afraid to start over. Sometimes code gets so complicated and just convoluted that you might have to take a step back and just say, you know, this is too hard to understand. Scrap it. You know, just because you've invested X amount of hours into it does not mean that you have to keep going on that path if it's not working. If it's proving to be more of a hassle than anything, then just don't be afraid to scrap it and restart. Oftentimes doing that will allow you to create a cleaner, more efficient piece of code that's easier to understand and also easier to work with. Use a different color scheme than the default game maker color scheme. Look, the default game maker syntax highlighting and things like that is okay, but after working in Sublime Text with Python a lot, I really liked the variety of colors that were there. So I went ahead and I basically copied all of the Sublime Text Python colors over to Game Maker and I've found that it makes it so much easier to identify what you're looking at. I can tell immediately that the green highlighted things are the things that I've personally created. All of the blue highlighted things are built in Game Maker functions and all of the red or like magenta, whatever you want to call that color, all those highlighted things are constants. Anything else is either a variable name or an operator or something like that but it just makes it so much easier to know what you're looking at. You don't get lost in the code as easily. Back up your data. This is an important one. Don't risk losing your hard worked on files because of some stupid hard drive error or something. Always back up your data. I have this game backed up to Dropbox and I also have it backed up to an external hard drive. And the external hard drive backs it up automatically every hour. I'm really serious about backing data up. I don't want to lose any of it, and I'm sure you don't either, so just make sure you have redundant copies of the game elsewhere that are easier for you to access. That's all I have for today. I hope that these tips are helpful, and I hope that you at least take something away from it. Uh, stay tuned for our upcoming game. This is actually the project file for our new game. It's going to be uh, a mobile game available on Android and potentially a PC game. But uh, keep an eye out for that one, and until next time, see you later.